Okay, hope my voice is audible and my screen is visible to everyone. Yes. Okay, fine. Let's start with, I have shared the solution of uh, uh, previous class and the last class solution I will share that today, but uh, please work on those questions. And if you have any, if you need any clarification, we can connect tomorrow on that. So I'm starting with decode function, okay. Although these functions which I'll be teaching you today, like uh, decode, null if, any, all, <clears throat> these are not used very frequently, okay? But yes, I have seen certain situations where there is this is very useful. So you should know like what is the functionality of this functions, okay? That's why I thought that I let's introduce this concept. Here. So I've created a table bank and uh, you have a column bank ID, you can see, and this is the bank IDs, okay? Now the, the requirement, supposing your project is, they want to map each and every ID to their exact values, <clears throat> okay? So for that, we have this decode function. Let me show you the output first of all. See, when I have used this decode function, what I have done, bank ID one assigned to SBI, bank ID two assigned to ICICI, similarly three to HGFC and fourth is NA. Okay, I've tell, I will tell you why this is coming as NA. Before that, let's try to understand what this decode will do. In this query, I have used select and after that I have mentioned the column name, bank ID, comma. I have used this decode function here, okay? After decode, I have written this column name, bank ID, okay? And uh, then comma, this code I have given. Concentrate on this part, this, this, this one is important. I have written bank ID, the column name, and then after that I have written 001 comma SBI. So from this, I'm telling to SQL engine that in this column bank ID, in this column bank ID, wherever <clears throat> the, the ID is 001, consider that as SBI or mark SBI against it. Similarly, if it is 002, mark ICICI against it. And similarly for 003, mark HDFC. Okay, then I have written here NA. So this NA is like a default. If if there is no other IDs mentioned here, then if you encounter any other ID apart from this one, two, three, then mark it as NA. So that's why you can see for ID four, it has marked it as NA. Uh, those not speaking, please go on mute. Thank you. So <clears throat> this is the concept here. Any question on this? Is it clear? This is very simple. Uh, yeah, you might be thinking that the really same task I can do using case statement as well, right? So yes, you can you can do using case as well. Let me show you that. Select bank ID. Case when bank ID is equal to 001, then SBI. Okay, then you can write when bank ID is equal to 002, then I see I see I. When bank ID is equal to 003, then HDFC. Else. N. In bank name from bank ID. So same thing, of course, you can do using case as well. Let me show you the output. Table does not exist. Oh, sorry, bank. Huh? So you can see you're getting exactly same output. 
So yes, you can you can ask this question. That then we same thing I can do using case. Then why I'm going? Then I want why I, want, I should prepare the code. If I ask you this question, that same thing you can do using case. I have shown you that using case you can do the same thing. Then why the code? So what you will answer? Do you have any answer? Why I should go for the code? Any idea? Maybe performance. Performance, okay. Then easy to write. See, uh, performance, uh, of course, okay. But if you see, this is a little bit easy to write, right? Suppose here, if I have to add a few more IDs and the bank name, so it's a bit easy. But here you have to write when a statement for each and each and every. Okay, and here the readability is also a little bit good as compared to the case statement. Okay, but I am not comparing this, and this is not a topic of comparison. But you might be thinking that then we the same thing I can do using case. So why decode? So decode this is like a little bit user friendly as compared to case. But most of the students they know the case statement then then. That's why they don't prefer writing the code. Or hardly, I think you will see any SQL query where, where the users they will use the code. Why? Because we all are used to using case statement. That's why we prefer case. But it totally depends on your wish, but whatever you want to use, you can use that. Either the code or case your wish. Is this clear? Any question? <laughs> Clear. Okay. So these are ready made functions. There is no more logic so that I can explain you. Okay. So, huh, but, but many times in interviews, they will ask you, they will, they will ask you that, okay, what is the code? Write with the help of the code. Okay, like that. Nowadays, the interviewers, they are changing the pattern. Like if you're using decode, they will tell you don't use decode. Many of the questions, uh, the analyst questions for the data analyst position, they will give a question and they will give certain conditions that, okay, you don't have to use window function. You should not use join. You will try to write query with some other methods. So they want to check that how much grasp, how much command you have on SQL queries. Okay. So it's like they will give you limited weapons and they will tell you that, okay, Go and fight. So it's like that. Okay, so this was all about the code. Very simple. Hope you all have understood. Then there is a any keyword. This is again, I think very few of you might have heard this. Any let me explain you what this any is. Yeah, filter table is trend here. Let me show you the data. This is the data in a student table. Simple, very simple table. You have a student name and you have their marks. Okay. Now I am trying to execute this query. Select a star from a student. I want some data from a student table, but I have mentioned a condition where marks. Okay, greater than. And then I have written any. Here the function of any keyword is exactly same, exactly same as the dictionary meaning of any okay suppose you you went to a restaurant and you will tell that i want any of this or it, it any of this item is there okay but here little variation is there i will tell you what is that variation but almost same as that dictionary meaning i am executing this now see when i have executed this query i got dot put as 30 20 15 12 11 30 20 15 12 11 except then I got all the values right except this value 10 i got all the other values why this any keyword whenever sql engine will encounter this any keyword the sql will understand that the user is telling that if the marks is greater than if it is greater than any of these values either greater than 10 
either greater than 11 12 15 or any of this if it is greater show me that value or display those records okay so now if you will compare now start comparing this marks 10 is this greater than 10 no is marks 10 greater than 11 no marks 10 greater than 12 no 10 greater than 15 no so this has not fulfilled any of this condition that's why you have not got 10 as an output here okay but if you'll check 15 15 greater than 10 yes it is greater than 10 at the first instance itself the condition is satisfied so you got output here okay similarly you can check for 12 third record is 12 greater than 10 yes 12 is greater than 10 so first condition is fulfilled so you'll get out now you can ask a question but then where 12 is not greater than 15 right you have mentioned here that mark should be greater than these values but this 12 is not greater than 15 then how you got this is an output so we explain this so 12 is greater than 10 so that's why it that's is all. picking any of the values perfect a story finish i am not going to compare with all the value if it fulfills any of this four condition we will display that as an output <laughs> okay suppose uh, a student who has passed 10th examination okay and he is going for plus two admission in the college they have mentioned that marks should be greater than 19 physics or if it is greater than 19 chemistry or if it is greater than 19 biology he will get admission okay keep it maths he will get admission so suppose if he have received in physics he has he has scored 85 in chemistry he has scored 89 and in maths he has scored 91. now tell me he will get admission or not no see here this is the or condition i mentioned either in physics greater than 90 or in chemistry greater than 90 or in math greater than 90. i'm not telling this is an and condition that is what i'm telling you here this is not and condition i'm telling if any of this condition is fulfilled he will get admission so here in mass he has scored 91 this condition is fulfilled right he will get admission got it so here you have to compare with any of this if he fulfills any of this condition he will get admission so this 12 of course this is not greater than 15 but it is greater than 10 so he has fulfilled one condition so we have shown that is not put here is this clear not yeah. yes or no yes okay so similarly 11 11 yeah someone is asking question any question guys okay similarly 11 11 is not greater than 12 11 is not greater than 15 then how this 11 is coming in the output who will explain this it is greater than 10 perfect because 11 is greater than 10 <coughs> so it is fulfilling one of the condition that's all so any is telling that it should fulfill any of these four conditions i am not bothered about all these conditions hope this is clear guys yes <clears throat> okay now same same query you can write like this as well and one thing i will tell you and uh, this is all what you can tell gyan or whatever you want i'm telling this is based on my previous batch ex experience 
some of the students they will think that they have never studied any they have never seen this keyword any anywhere in the sql experience whatever they have so they they, <laughs> they will suggest that let's not cover this topic so don't restrict yourself to within your boundary okay you never know when you will uh, when you will come across this new keyword sometime what happened you are working in a project okay and you are asking for requirement that okay what is the requirement of this functionality so your business in analysts or your stakeholders generally your business analysts they will share a query with you that okay this is the query from this query try to understand the requirement so and in that query if they have used this any or decode and if you don't know that so you have to take help of Google, right? So that's why I don't restrict yourself that, okay, I know this keyword, so I will study that only. If you're studying anything new, so maybe that can help you at any moment, okay? So same query, this same query I have written through using or. You see, you have used or keyword, okay? And let me run this. You got the same output? Exactly same output. So <laughs> this is exactly same as this one. Then again, you can ask this question, then why, why I'm using this any, I will prefer this or, okay. You can prefer this, but this is, means if you have a lot of values, this is very useful. Here, you don't have to write all these conditions or marks or marks like that, okay. Hope this is clear. <laughs> Any question, guys? Okay. Now, uh, now this was all about any. Now the same query. Same query. Suppose if I will write. Instead of any, if I will write all here, write all. Before executing this query, just uh, apply your common sense, okay? And any or or guess, okay? Guess it that what what the what would be the functionality so, of this uh, all keyword? Yeah. So instead of or, we would be getting and result. That's all. Sorry, finish. Okay all is equivalent to your and condition now let me execute the, this query you got only 20 and 30 as an output why we got only 20 and 30 as an output who will explain this so 20 and 30 fulfill all the condition correct so out of this six records only 20 and 30 will fulfill all these conditions 20 is greater than 10 greater than 11 greater than 12 greater than 15 right 30 is greater than 10 greater than 11 greater than 12 greater than 50. so this is like and condition you are telling all means you you are telling that this greater than must be fulfilled or satisfied with all this data okay so that's why you're using here all conditions so here suppose in this case if the college is telling that you must have a score greater than 19 physics, greater than 19 chemistry, greater than 19 maths. And if this is the scenario, so in this case, that particular student will not get admission because in physics and chemistry is not satisfying the condition here. Okay. Similarly, this, <coughs> this query is equivalent to this one. This is equivalent to this one. Okay. Okay, any question guys on this? Any and
Any question? Simple? Yes, no question okay. from my side. So now moving to Nalif. I think I have this Nalif as well. Okay. I, I'm repeating. Okay. Uh, uh, taking some other example for this. Okay, fine. So anyone, any question on any and all decode? These are the ready-made functions and very useful in certain scenarios when you have to filter multiple records. So now moving to Nalif. Okay, null if. Null if is again very simple. So what this will do, this will compare the first and the second record. Okay, suppose if I will write here one. If both the records are same, it will return null value. So it is null, right? If the values are different, suppose if I will put here one comma two, the values are different here, right? In this case, you are getting one, right? Now, if I will change this to comma one, if I will execute, now you will get two. What you understood from this? I have shown you three examples. Whatever is the first argument uh, will be uh, written as a result. Correct. After comparing. Correct. <coughs> Sorry, I still. I'm not recovered from this cough and cold. Okay. Nullif function is like when the first and the second record, they both are same, it will return null, right? I have shown you this example. The first and second, they both are one. The output is null. This is simple, right? Apart from that, if the values are not same, this example, look into this query. The values are not same, right? Second one. The values are not same, right? So whenever the values are not same, the SQL engine will give you the first value or first data as an output. See here, the output is one, right? Output is one here. In this case, let me execute this query. Output is two, okay? So it will give you the first argument as a output. Now, <clears throat> I have seen students who think that this will give the greater of the two values. No, it's not like that. Don't get confused. It will not give the greater of the two values. If it gives greater of the two values, so here out of one and two, two is greater, you would have received two here, right? It will give you the first argument if the values are not same. If the values are same, it will give you null. Hope this is clear. Any question? It will perform only numerical or words also. That's what I'm showing you. Now, in this case, tell me what should be the output. Hmm. Both the arguments are same or not? It <laughs> null. Yeah. It should be null. Null because they both are same output is null right now what about this if i execute this one then small india will i my first one case specific uh, so yeah in, with, uh, india in first one correct so here the case is different. So if the case is different, we have already studied that SQL is case sensitive with data. So the case is different. So the ASCII values will be different. And that's why the SQL engine will consider this two India as different values, right? And whenever it is different, you know that it will show the first argument as an output. Let me show you this. First argument is displayed as an output. Hope it's clear now. So, the... only... hmm, yeah. it is to compare only two arguments or more than two? Uh, it is for two arguments. Okay, for more than two, I will tell you <laughs> next class. Some other keywords are there. Okay. Is it fine? Is it clear? Now, 
don't get confused with null if nvl qualies interviews especially to freshers they ask this kind of questions to confuse you that what is the difference between null if null uh, null if nvl and qualies then they will ask a question what is the difference between delete truncate and drop i hope we have discussed all those things earlier so any question guys on this null if function hope is clear ha huh, i agree that what all topics i'm teaching you today that's what i've kept all the things at the very last very rarely you will use this this concepts very rarely one reason is one reason is most of the students they are not aware of this this is very powerful i will tell you an example once i have i i posted a solution of a sql query on linkedin i have used decode okay so i got i received comments that you should use case statement and all those things so yeah that depends on your wish i prefer decode because i thought that okay let's use decode today i have used decode so one reason is many students that don't know that okay these all keywords exist what are the functionalities so <coughs> that's why they will prefer that other techniques that's why i told you that in decode you can use it in case statement so those who don't know decode they will prefer case statement any you can do this with the help of this or keyword okay and all you can prefer this and condition but if you know this any and all better use this one okay oh find in any questions please someone has such a not able to use my microphone okay shivan so uh, you can uh, you can can you hear me is my voice audible shaman is facing some audio issues others you are able to hear me clearly yes then okay, okay yes i think oh, yeah. okay shaman is able to hear okay fine so guys this was all about this decode and null if any and all okay now moving to constraints in order to save time i have kept all these queries at one place it saves time a little bit so what is constraints okay constraints are nothing like rules okay some are user defined rules some are uh, system generated rule or sql world rule we will see that but before that <laughs> before that first of all tell me that have i taught you earlier this primary key constraint no not sure okay not an issue let me cover this now okay i have i covered what is primary key yes yes okay yes anyone who wants me to repeat the concept of primary key okay you all know so primary key is nothing but the key or the column must be having unique values and no null values these are the two conditions for a primary key so <clears throat> i am creating table employee here table is created and i have three columns employee id first name last name and then at the last i have mentioned employee id as a primary key this is known as constraint so i am telling to sql engine that sql employee id is my primary key now i want to see the structure of this table so i will use this describe keyword so this is the structure now tell me is this the <clears throat> correct structure what sql engine is showing but why here employee id it is showing as not null i have not mentioned anything null or not null why it is coming as not null here employee id in front of that because it's a primary key column yes because i have mentioned that my employee id is the primary key so that's why by default sql engine will understand that this is a primary key he doesn't have to accept null values and that's why it is giving it as a not null okay now insert into employee okay tell me a sql keyword tell me a sql keyword which have two different functionalities
yes sql keyword which have two different functionalities who will answer this answer is is on your screen only null doesn't have two different functionalities null means so we have the null null is the data i am asking for the keyword primary key primary key no primary key is one only no where wherever you are mentioning primary key it means that uh, you are telling it must be unique and it must not it should not it should have not null value ha ah, okay in that in that way you are telling that it it caters to two different requirement okay that that's that's also fine any other apart from that answer is present on your screen you tell me concentrate after line number 90 <clears throat> can you find that keyword it performs two different entirely different functionality in different scenarios what is that keyword okay i'm giving you a hint after line number 95 no idea <laughs> you are uh, talking about where sir no where care is a data type it have only one function data type it will allow okay. no idea <coughs> line number 99 dsc what is this keyword it will describe the employee table structure okay apart from this where you have used this earlier descending order yes Got it. You have used this in order by clause, if you remember, in descending order, right? So here, this DSC is showing you the structure of table, and there, in order by clause, it will give you the output in descending or manner, right? Yeah. So this performs. Can, to we, can you repeat the question once again? Can you repeat the question once again? My question was that tell me a keyword which performs two different functionalities in different scenarios. Okay. So DSC, it will it will show you the structure of table here. If you're using this DSC command with order by, that will sort the data in descending order. Different functionalities in different scenarios, but the same keyword. Okay. Okay. Oh, fine. Ah, <clears throat> uh, okay. So let me insert this data. I have inserted this record in this employee table. Select star from. Tell me the costly keyword of SQL world. Listing. No. Join. No. Drop. No. Answer is on your screen. Select star. Star. The star is very costly. Okay, <clears throat> why it is costly? If you're writing a star, you are telling I want all the columns, all the records. So it gives a lot of overhead for SQL engine to fetch all these things. Okay, similar. I, I'm not sure if I have given this example in your batch or in the previous batch. I have told. So <clears throat> here you are telling that I want all the things. Okay, suppose you went, you're going for shopping. Okay, and you're your mother has to retain items by that by this 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 departmental items okay second scenario your mom is saying that okay just go to go to market and buy some vegetable or something like potato tomato something like that okay which one will be easy for you first one or second one first one second one Second one, in second one, you are, you have limited items to buy, either potato or tomato, one or two items. In the first case, you have to buy ten items. That's an overhead for you, right? Similarly, when you're writing a star, that's an overhead for SQL because in a star you are telling I want all the columns present in this table, and I want all the records in this table, right? So that's why I never use a star whenever you are working in production environment. and sometime intentionally if you are going to attend interview the interviewer will, will check this 
you will write this query select the star from employee or some other table and they will ask you that what is the problem in this query so you will get confused that okay what's the problem it looks good so the problem is you have used a star and this is not considered as a best practice so never use a star many times in our project it has happened <clears throat> I'll tell you one example. One of the Fraser, he has used this star in the production environment and he was given the access of uh, view access. Okay. So, because generally production environment access is not given to everyone. So, <coughs> uh, we have provided view access to him in the production. He was working closely with the business analysts, the stakeholders. And the table was having close to 15 or 16 millions of records. A lot of columns were there. I think close to 40 to 50 columns were there. He has executed this query in the production. Now the SQL engine was processing that query and it was taking a lot of time. And ultimately, you know what happened? Any guesses what might have happened from your experience? It will, experience? Affect, the performance. It will Sorry? affect the performance of others also. Correct. Correct. All the channels, all the pipelines were occupied in serving his query. And what happened? The other users who were trying to hit to that particular table was also getting impacted. They were thinking that the same query I use daily doesn't take this much time. Why it is taking this much time today? Okay. So if you are if if you're not aware of this small small things, so not only you, your other team members can also get impacted. And how this was discovered is the other users they have raised this concern to dba okay when the dba has performed root cause analysis he observed that there is a particular user who is consuming all this processing speed of the sql and the and the, the schema the database and all those things are occupied and then he published that in the email so after that you might think that what would have happened so but he was a fresher so it happened so but don't use this star that's what Cracks of the story. <clears throat> okay, I'm using here because we here we have a limited column, limited data. I'm not working in production environment. This is not a project task. Okay, fine then. So sorry, I deviated from the topic. So I was teaching you primary key constraint. So here you can see I have inserted one AB three uh, data. So it is inserted successfully. Okay, now, but this is not what I want to teach you. This is what I want to teach you. <clears throat> now. I am trying to insert this record. Now tell me what will happen if I will insert if I will execute this. It will not allow. Why? Answer is correct. Because of but primary key. Because of primary because key. Of primary key. It, it okay. will it will not allow duplicate values as well as null values. You got some error message. Unique constraint violated. <clears throat> You have violated the unique constraint. Why? Because you have mentioned that the employee ID is a primary key, and primary key, you know, that should not be duplicate. So SQL engine is telling that then we already you have entered the value one as a primary key that is present in the employee table. Again, you are inserting the same primary key. We will not allow this. So I asked the question that why SQL you will not allow this. He told that you only have mentioned that the employee ID is a primary key, and as per the definition, primary key must be unique. So you are violating this unique constraint. That's why we will not allow this value. Hope this is clear. Yes, sir. Okay. Now you can ask a question that, okay, fine, then you are telling that <clears throat> this ID is already present, but these records are different. No, here it is AC, here it was AB, right? So guys, we are not bothered about the other columns. If I mention primary key on employee ID, I will check this value only. If this is same, we will not accept this. Okay. <coughs> what about this? If I'll execute this, what will happen? It is not allowed. Error. Why? Null values cannot be allowed by primary key. Primary key doesn't accept null value. That's why SQL engine is telling me that why you are trying to insert null, we will not allow. This is again a violation because you have mentioned that employee ID is a primary key and we will not allow this. Oh, this is clear. So the so from this the value should be presented uh, if you are mentioning a primary key. No, sorry, I didn't get your question. Can you please repeat? So value should be presented if you are mentioning a primary key. 
ha yeah value must be there if you're mentioning is a primary yeah, key yeah. value must be there a very simple example is your aadhar card you must be having aadhar number have you seen any aadhar card without any aadhar number that's not possible right null value of aadhar number that's not possible why because aadhar card aadhar number is a mandatory value that must be there your pan card you must be having pan number have you seen any pan card without any pan number not possible so null values are not allowed now if i will execute this query <coughs> then what will happen it will allow it will allow right let me show you this so one row is inserted so why this is allowing and this query was not allowing null we are not mention uh, first name as a primary primary key. So key. correct good so hope this primary key concern is clear to everyone any question guys please ask okay <coughs> Hope you all have understood this. Tanvir, Tanvir, if you don't mind, can you please teach about foreign uh, key also? Okay. Yes, sir. Sir, sir, that is no. Then we'll discuss that. Okay. Finish okay. this. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So now I want to teach you one more constraint here. Yeah. This I'm executing. Table is created. Before, before inserting any data. Tell me what is the meaning of this? Who will explain this? ID should be greater than five. ID should be ID number greater, greater than, than five. Inserting to employ values. Check constraint violated. SQL engine is telling that you have done, you have violated some rule. What I have violated? Here I mentioned ID should be greater than five, but here I have passed four, which is less than five. That's why this is throwing error message. Okay. Can you tell me uh, from your uh, from daily life example where you can use this? If you have to prepare a voter ID card table, right? Suppose you're working in government department and you have to create a table of voter ID card and there is a column age. So what constant you will give there? Below 18. It should be greater than 18. That should be greater than 18, right? 18 you give a constant check age greater than 18, okay? So in certain scenarios, when you have these conditions that IDs and age should be greater than that, then you will use this. Similarly, if you're working on ISTC side, right? If you are, if you have mentioned a child passenger, then you will give the age must be less than five. Suppose someone has mentioned that, that one of the passenger is child and the age is greater than five. That's a conflict. Your system should throw error message, right? So in those scenarios, we use this constant of check. Okay. Hope this is clear. Yes. Okay. I know those things are simple, but still, if you have any question, guys, please ask. So, can, we, can we have more than uh, one arguments to check? Say, like ID greater than five. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, yeah. Is not of none. course. Of course, you can do that as well. Yeah. You can do that as well. <laughs> you can try that. Okay, that's a good question. You can try that. I want to show you a few more uh, constraints. I am mentioning my just one minute. Somewhere I mentioned in my ETL slides. It should be there. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Suddenly this came to my mind. So this slide I used to cover in ETL testing. So here you can see this is also talking about constraints. So here you see what all constant constants I have mentioned. So first is ID not null. This is again a constant. I am telling that ID should not be not uh, should not be null values. If someone is passing null values on ID, the system will throw error message. So name is again not null. Grid is again not null. So this not null constraints are used. Suppose many times when you are filling a form, okay, and you click submit, you will get an error message that these columns are mandatory. And you will see that a small red color star will be there, right? So what it means, you have to give some value there. 
So how it works? It works based on this not null only. They are given this not null constraint. So they're asking you to enter some value in those fields. Okay. Then here you have primary key constraint. ID is your primary key. Although this doesn't make any sense because you have mentioned primary key as an ID. So no need to mention here not null. Okay. Then see this one. I have mentioned check gender in male, female, unknown. So here I am telling that you have to pass gender values as only M A L E male, F E M E L E female or unknown. If you're if you're passing any other value, suppose in general you're passing only M, the system will throw error message. If you're passing only F, system will throw error message. This is again one example of check constraints. Okay, then here you can see I mentioned age is greater than or equal to 17. I'm not sure I was having a few more examples. Uh, these are the constraints employed analysis. Hope, hope this is clear, right? Understood this. Can you go back to that example slide? Uh, this slide you are telling, this one? Oh, this one. This one. Oh, okay. This one, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Shall I repeat this? Hello. Uh, no, I'm just reading it. Oh, okay, okay, sure, sure. Okay, please go through this. If you want, I will share the screenshot of this. So, uh, actually, suddenly this came to my mind. I used to cover this constraints in detail in the CTL classes. So, I suddenly this came to my mind that I have this slide. I will share this if you guys need, okay, on the screenshot. Any question on this constraints? <clears throat> Okay, no questions. So now coming to foreign key constraint. But before proceeding with foreign key and primary key constraint, please, if you have any question, please ask. Shall I proceed with this foreign key constraint topic? Yes. yes. Okay. So of course, this is uh, very important. And primary key, foreign key, I will explain in, deta in detail when I will discuss the joints, okay? First of all, let me create this table. So table is created and I'm trying to insert three records in this table. These are the three reports. Let me show you data. <coughs> Select stuff from department. So uh, here you have ID 10, 20, 30, the name, IT, HR and finance department. And location is Hyderabad, Delhi, and Mumbai. Okay. Now I'm trying to create another table employee, employee one. And in this table, <coughs> I'm, I've inserted three records. Let me show you this records as well. So here ID 101, 102, 103. Name is Anurag, Hina, and salary and department ID is there, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I have done a mistake here. I have done a mistake here. One minute, guys. Give me one minute. Hmm. Now this is the data, but before this, let me copy this in Excel sheet and let me try to explain you from there. So <clears throat> okay, when I do this example, this is coming here. So this is your department table. And then this is your employee table. Now before this, right, what I want to make you understand is 
see here these two tables have some relation okay department id means department id 10 means it department 20 means hr department 30 means finance department okay so here if i will tell you if i will ask you that anurag is from which department can you tell me it it, it. it. because anurag department id is 10 and then you can see here id is 10 so it means he's from it department pranay is 20 department id 20 is from hr so pranay is working in hr department and hina is working in 30 30 means finance department any questions so far this is very simple right now <clears throat> and this imply one table i want to insert one more record some beep and uh, oh i got some output integrity constraint violated so i got some output some error message or this error message is we will discuss that but we got some error message so now let's try to understand why we got this error message and uh, this is the concept of primary key from this you will understand that see here the problem is if you will concentrate on this imply one table when i was creating this table imply one i have mentioned this line okay so this line means I want to add department ID as a column in this imply one table. Okay. Data type is end. So so far I think this is clear to you all that I'm adding a department ID column whose data type is end. But this is something new. You might be thinking what this is all about. Okay. So here I am telling to SQL engine that SQL SQL please refer while adding any department id if someone is trying to insert a department id on this employee one table before inserting that department id i repeat i'm telling to sql engine that sql if someone is trying to insert a department id in this employee one table before inserting that particular department id please refer please refer department table please refer department table so this is a department table sql engine will refer this table and in this table refer this column id he will refer this column id and he will check that the department id which you are trying to insert is already present in this department table or not if it is present then only it will accept it if it is not present it will not accept it same thing has happened here here you are trying to insert uh, sorry department id 40 right department id 40 but department id 40 is not present in this department table is it present it's not present so that's why sql engine is throwing error message that parent key not found why because you are trying to insert a department id 40 for some beef whose employee id is 104 whose salary is 52000 rupees but this record was not getting inserted why because sql engine is searching for this department id in this department table in this id column but this id 40 is not present here that's why it has thrown this error message is this clear any question or shall i repeat i am repeating it okay so here, first of all, I have created a department table. This is very straightforward, right? In this department table, I have this ID, name, location, and I've inserted three records, department ID 10. ID means 10 means department ID, it's IT department. 20 means HR department, 30 means finance department, okay? This is very straightforward, no confusion here. Then I have, 
then I'm trying to create an employee one table. Here, these are the columns. I have employee ID as a column. I have name as a column, salary as a column, and department ID as a column, right? Here, the data type of department ID is int integer. And here, this is this is the one which I'm trying to make you understand. Here, I'm telling to SQL engine that if someone is trying to insert a department ID in this employee one table, so before inserting that, before inserting that, please check if that department ID is present in this department table, this table, and in this ID column, if it is present, then only accept it. If it is not present, then please don't accept it. This is the meaning of this query. That's why when you have executed this insert into employee one <clears throat> department ID 10, it has accepted it, right? Why? Because this ID 10, department ID 10, is already present here. Department ID 20 is already present here. Department ID 30 is already present here. But when you have, when you are trying to insert this record, this has thrown error message. Why? Because the department ID 40 is not present in this department table. Is this clear now? Yes, then we it is called foreign key or what you are trying to say foreign key constraint constraint okay. yeah this is this is not this is not a concept of foreign key uh, i will i will teach you foreign key and i will teach you joins so this is known as foreign key constraints why foreign key because in the other table you are using a column which is referring to another table column that's why this is a foreign key for this table Okay. Uh, anyone who wants me to repeat this, any question? It will look for only that uh, field alone. It will not look ah. for data type, everything, right? Ah, that, uh, that, that, will not, providing... that will not okay. go. So see, obviously if the, okay, okay, no, no, I will not, don't want to go in that detail. You are correct, yeah. So it will check for the data is there or not. Now the question is, suppose suppose you were asking question that, no, Tanvi, this is very important data. I have to insert this at any cost. Now what to do? Tell me some solution, guys, what to do? You see, I'm trying to insert this and I'm getting their message, unique integrity constraint. But my manager is telling that, no, we want this record to be displayed on the report. What to do, guys? Who will tell me the solution for this? Reference should be removed from this table. Okay, reference should be removed. Any other solution? We need to add uh, 40 uh, department ID in the department table. That's all. The story finish that please add this value in this table department right 40 okay. and check for the department check for the business stakeholder the source team that what is the department suppose this is from sales department market as sales check for the location suppose this is from chennai market as chennai okay and then first of all insert this record this record inserted, cross verify this. Record is inserted. Now execute this. Inserted. Got it? Yes. So yes if you yes, want yes. to check this data, you can check if it is present or not. So, yes, you got this. 40 department ID now. So, this is foreign key constraint. This is not the concept of foreign key, but I was teaching you that foreign key constraint. What is that? Hope you understood this. <coughs> uh, is it clear? And this is very frequently if you're working in any ATL project, any database project, okay, this foreign key constraint will be there. As per my experience so far, I have not seen any table. No, I will not tell any table. Means most of the table in the projects wherever I have worked, foreign key constraint 
will be there, especially if you're working on dimension fact tables. This must be there at any cost, whether it's star schema or snowflake schema or any other schema, it will be there. Uh, I know this is a bit tricky concept and very important concept. So please let me know if you want me to repeat this, I will repeat this. Is it clear, guys? Yes, clear. Okay, now. Now here I have a question. If this is clear to you, I have a question. <clears throat> this department ID column in this employee one table, this department ID column in this employee one table, I am referring to department table and ID column, right? Here the names are different, right? Here department ID is referring to ID column name. Will that be a problem or is that allowed? Name might be anything. It could be an ID number yeah. or whatever. In entire SQL world, not only to this topic. Value set and zero. <laughs> ha, very good. In entire SQL world, column name doesn't matter value matters okay name can be anything okay it will just match the values so that's why intentionally i have kept the name here id the previous batch same question few of the students they got confused that tell me here this is department id and here how you are referring to this id that doesn't matter okay you can you can match to any column but yes of course that should have some business sense Okay, I'm. Uh, you cannot match this to name column. That will not be having any business sense, right? But if in your project there is some requirement that you have to match to name, you can match it. Not an issue. So you, do, you should understand the business significance of your project, and accordingly you should make it a primary. You can cut short, project. sir. If you are feeling uncomfortable, you can cut short. Uh, maybe. No, no, no problem. I'm, I'm fine. No issues. So, for, hope this is clear. Yes, then. So this was uh, all about uh, decode, constraints, null if, any and all. I repeat, any question on these topics. But please uh, revise these concepts, work on the assignments. Otherwise, you know, after one to two weeks, you will forget all those things. And maybe if you're thinking that you can go through Google, you can search for this. So yes, you can go through that. but. While teaching, I'm trying to explain some different concepts which might not be present on the pages of Google where you are searching or might be present, okay? So better revise these concepts after my session. Please spend at least one hour, revise these concepts. Hopefully this will be helpful. Okay, so after this, uh, uh, let me jump to the correlated query. Shall I proceed with correlated query? Yes, then. Okay. Before this, how many of you, how many of you have heard it correlated query? Nobody. I think you all might have heard about this correlated query concepts. No one. Okay. Let me take some example. Um, where is that salary, 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 salary? Query, which is uh, based on that uh, main query. Query, which is based right. on main query. Okay, let, let, let's look into that. But please concentrate on this. I Before explaining and telling you, this is complex concept. Okay, I'm not trying to make you after it, but Yes, this is a bit complex concept, but yes, many of the scenarios, the complex queries, this can this can solve it very easily. Okay. I will try my little best to make you understand. Okay. If you, if, you, if you think that it is not clear, stop me then and there. Don't wait for the class to end. Just stop me then and there and ask the question that no, this is not clear. Please repeat. I will repeat that. So <coughs> This is our employee table. Okay, so this is the employee table, and uh, here, first of all, let me explain the data. So here I have name AD, 
F, B, C, some values are there, and these are the tech different departments, and these are the salaries. Okay. First of all, I will start with a very simple one, and then we will see some complicated cases of this. Here in this, I want to find. <clears throat> I want to find. Uh, I want to find the maximum salary. Okay. Tell me who is earning the maximum salary. So what will be your answer? Select maximum salary. Sorry, one minute, I think. Employee. One minute, sorry, and this data I need to change. I want to keep it a little bit simple. I don't want in duplicate record here. <coughs> oh, they both are from different departments. So then it's fine. No, but let me remove this one. One minute, guys. Sorry, I'm trying to change the data because this duplicate. No, this will confuse. That's why. Keep it simple. Keep it. Employee. A B sales four hundred. I have moved. Sales four hundred moved. Okay. So this is the <clears throat> data. Now the question is, I want the, I want that employee who is earning the maximum salary. So can you tell me query for that? Select maximum salary. Yes, you have that select maximum employee. salary from employee and from you get employee. the right? You all know this, correct? But I will try to solve this question using correlated query. Okay. <clears throat> Suppose you don't know that maximum concept, that maximum keyword you don't know. Or maybe in the question they have asked that, okay, tell me the maximum salary. The person who is earning the maximum or the highest salary from this table and you don't have to use that max keyword okay <laughs> that's the question so how to solve this first of all is the question clear to everyone any confusion in the question clear right okay if i will ask you just uh, look at this table and tell me the maximum salary so what will be your answer? 500. So 500 is a maximum salary, right? So actually your brain has done some processing and what your brain has done, I will explain that. So when the question is to find a maximum salary, we will make a copy of this. Forget about SQL, that suppose we don't know SQL. So I'll make a copy of this, right? First of all, I will concentrate on this first record and I, I want to check whether this is maximum or not. What I will do? I will compare this 100 with <clears throat> this 100. Is this 100 greater than 100? No. Oh, sorry, is this 100 greater than 100? No. Is this 100 greater than 200? No. Is this 100 greater than 400? No. Greater than 300? No. So if this 100 is not greater than any of these values, we can tell that this is not maximum, right? Correct? Correct, guys? Then I will move to the next record. Then I will check whether this record is maximum or not. Then I will check this 200. I will keep it here and I will check with this. Is this 200 greater than 100? So yes, this is greater than 100. Now, can I tell that this is the maximum salary? You need to check with the other values. You need to check with others as well, right? Just checking with one record, you cannot tell that this is maximum. So I will check with other records. Is this 200 greater than 200? No. You will check with other records as well. So finally, you got that this is not maximum salary. Okay, then what you will do? Next record, you will check this 400. Copy this 400 from here, put it here. Is this 400 greater than 100? Yes, but you should check with other records as well. Is this 400 greater than 200? Yes. Is this 400 greater than 400? No. Okay, so from this 400 greater than 300? Yes. 400 greater than 500? No. So this is also failed. Now let's move to the next record. 
300 again the same thing you will do 500 when you will take this 500 and you will compare with this 500 greater than 100 yes 500 greater than 200 yes 500 greater than 400 yes 500 greater than 300 yes 500 is equal to 500 so that's also fine <clears throat> so we'll tell that 500 is the maximum salary is this clear so actually our brain is processing like this only but it is happening very fastly so we don't know how it is working so is this manual analysis clear or not first of all because your correlated query is based on this only exactly this only is this clear what i have what i have explained now how it works is it clear guys <coughs> Yes or no? I'm audible. Yes, then. Okay. Now, why you told me that 500 is the maximum salary? <coughs> because in employee B table, you don't have any record. Please make a note of this point. You don't have any record whose salary is greater than 500. Am I correct? In employee B table, you don't have any record whose salary is greater than 500. That's why you told that this is the highest salary. Yes. Is it clear now? Now, same thing. If I have to write in a query form, what I will do? Select. Okay, so I think uh, we should take this tomorrow because uh, uh, my my throat is is uh, disturbing me a lot. Okay, so better we'll take this tomorrow. Okay, and we'll continue from this example only. Okay, guys, so we'll continue tomorrow on this correlated query, and then if time permits, we'll jump to these joints. Okay, final call. Any question? Yes, then we, I can I connect to upper for the class? Yeah, yeah, sure. You can connect with me after class. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any question on this topic so far? Any other? No, okay, thing. fine. Okay, fine. Then. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye. We'll connect tomorrow at the same time. Thank you.